Hey, Amen, everybody. Let's give a quiet hand clap of praise. Hey, Amen. We thank God for the uh, awesome choir and the anointed songs that they bring us. Hey, Amen. If you're able, why don't you stand with me? And let's bless God and give him some praise on today and thank him for giving us another blessed opportunity to be in his house. Amen. Father, we worship you on today. God, thank you for being who you are in our lives, and thank you for being God and God all by yourself. How good you are to us, God. We just give you all the glory. God, we give you all the majesty and the power. You are mighty. God, we bless you today. We thank you, God, that you sit high and you look low. God, you know all about us but yet you still love us. Thank you for it, Father God. So we worship you with our minds. We worship you with our hearts. God, we worship with our body. We thank you for our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for redeeming us from the curse of the law. Thank you, Father, for your Son. And then, God, we thank you for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, be with us in our service on today. Manifest yourself to somebody. Show yourself strong, Holy Spirit. Illuminate somebody with your word. Give somebody a rhema word. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Hey Amen. We want to just thank God for another blessed day and another blessed opportunity. Uh, God had given me a word. Y'all know I've been preaching out of the book of Jeremiah. If you will, turn with me over today over to Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter, Jeremiah 32. And we want to read uh, from the uh, 17th verse down to the 20th verse. Jeremiah 32, 17 through 20. Amen? When you get there, say amen. amen. The, the word of God says, I, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenseth the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom, into the bosom of their children. After them, the great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name, great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even unto this day, and in Israel and among other men, thou hast made thee a name as at this day. Now, if you will turn down a few more verses down to the 26th verse, and there it reads, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Amen. Today I want to speak from uh, the thought, ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, ain't nothing, ain't nothing too, hard too hard for God. Let's say our confession. I confess that the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold 
for them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. I confess that thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Amen. Y'all have a seat. Amen. Today, my main thought is, ain't nothing too hard for God. And those of us who know God, we know that to be true. Down here on the earth, there's a lot that's too hard for us. But I want to say to y'all this morning that ain't nothing. Turn to somebody and say, ain't nothing. Too hard for God. There's a lot that's not, that we are unable to do. There's plenty that you and I can't accomplish. There's plenty that people we know can't accomplish. But we know that there's nothing that is too hard for God. God is able to do, I heard that the word of God says, exceeding, abundantly, above all. And I know I have some witnesses in the building today. Some of y'all are seated here on today knowing that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would have been. I don't know what I would have done if it had not been for the Lord on my side. So I just want to give God all the glory this morning because I know he is able. It will take a few minutes to talk about the prophet Jeremiah from the book of Jeremiah. And this scripture right here uh, in Jeremiah 32 is Jeremiah giving God some glory, praising God. Jeremiah is a prophet who uh, experienced a lot of hardship in his ministry. Unlike a lot of ministries today or ministers today that, you know, it's smooth sail and everything is wonderful. Jeremiah didn't have that kind of a ministry. He ministered to some people who didn't believe what he was, the message that he was given. Amen. He ministered to some people who were listening to some false prophets, giving them a lot of good news. And Jeremiah had to give them the bad news. Jeremiah in his day was telling Jerusalem that Jerusalem was going to fall, that God was going to send through a nation, in this case uh, the nation of, of Babylon, of which King Nebuchadnezzar was the king, was going to come through and uh, burn the city and take everybody captive. But the false prophets of the day were saying that there was going to be peace. Amen. Kind of like what we hear coming out of Washington now, right? There's going to be peace. But Jeremiah had to give them the bad news. Now what they're telling you is not true. So today we want to talk about and from the subject about how ain't nothing too hard for God. I want to share with y'all a a, a, a a few thoughts for some notes that I had done some studying on, and that is a model for how we ought to come before God with our prayers. You know, we need to come before God, giving God some glory and thanking him for all that he has done for us and for how he has blessed us. Amen. Even in the midst of when times are not working that well for you, you still need to come through and share with God how wonderful he is. God, how we adore you. Uh, in this scripture, start now, Jeremiah is telling God about how great he is. Amen. Let's look at, this, look at some of these uh, life application notes that I've got here. First of all, we see Jeremiah, he's giving God his props. He's telling God, he said that God is the fountain of all being and power and life and motion and perfection. God is the author of all that. 
that with God nothing is impossible. You know, even though things have not, maybe the things that you have been praying about have not come to pass yet, that God still is a, is a hearer of all our prayers. The Bible says that his eyes are over the righteous and his ears attentive to their prayers. So we know that God is listening to all that we have to bring before his presence. And here's another thought. God, thank God that God is a, is a God of mercy. Turn to somebody and say, God is a God of mercy. Amen. The writer says that mercy is God's darling attribute. I don't know about y'all, uh, you know, whenever I have a situation that I'm unable to handle or to deal with, I ask God to have mercy on me. Or oh, I ask God to have mercy on that person that's going through whatever it is they're going through. Because I know that God and, and uh, that attribute of mercy and grace. Everybody say grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Amen. Thank God for the old folks used to talk about that all the time. Thank God for his grace and thank God for his mercy. And the writer wrote that song, God's Amazing Grace. And I, I thank God for his amazing grace. Last week I was speaking about the sovereignty of God, how sovereign God is. God is running everything. In spite of what it might look like, God is still in charge. And I'm thankful. There's a lot going on out here in the world and we wonder where it's going to end. One thing we know is that it's going to wind up just the way God planned it. And so don't get discouraged about what you see. So today, let's look at uh, our first discourse verse here, Jeremiah 32 and 17, where Jeremiah is lifting up the name of the Lord. And Jeremiah says, I, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm." And there is nothing, let's say that again, there is nothing too hard for God. You know what? Some of us, you know, and all of us have been guilty at times of trying to give God a helping hand. But y'all know God don't really need no helping hand. And that's one reason why a lot of times our prayers don't get processed. Because you know, we go to God, but then we kind of feel like we kind of got some good ideas too, right? You know, we kind of go to God. We don't go to God asking God to help us. God, whatever it is you would have me to do in this situation, God, I'm just listening. My ears are attentive to you. Instead, we have that attitude that, well, God, had you thought about this? God, maybe I can help you with this idea. God don't need no help. He's God. He's God. Somebody say he's God. He's God on God all by himself. God is a sovereign God. God knows what he's doing. God is watching and he's mindful. I was saying this morning about how God knows our down setting. And God knows our uprising. I heard the word of God say that if I make my bed in hell, he's there with me. If I ascend up to heaven, there God is. God knows everything about everything. He knows all that's going on. Nothing happens by mistake. I was standing outside this morning, and that young lady sitting over there, she don't speak no English, but she came anyway. She said, I want to hear the word of God. I need somebody to pray for me. Her family suffered tragedy. At all these churches in Houston, Texas, she stopped. She looked in the door, and she said, can I come in? I said, of course, and there she is. We're going to pray and lay hands on her. You know, we may think we're going through a few things, but we don't have no idea what some folk are going through. But I said to y'all alone today that ain't nothing too hard for God. Even, even from them wicked uh, commands coming up out of Washington, harassing them poor people down on the border. This young lady is from Guatemala, harassing them. Somehow or another, we think we're better than some people. But I say ain't nobody better than nobody. God, the Bible said that God is no respecter. Come on, somebody. God is no respecter person. 
God knew where to send her. He knew we'd send her over here. We'd pay some attention to her. You know, some of these churches, bless their hearts, I know they love God, but they might not have time for her. We'll spend time with her. But I said to y'all this morning that God uh, is somebody and that there ain't nothing too hard for God. The children of Israel found out about it uh, in the desert. Turn with me. Let's look at a few verses here this morning. I won't be too long, but I want to share with y'all, try to see if I can help, uh, uh, help y'all to understand more about how God is something beyond what we can comprehend. In Exodus 16 and 13, the children of Israel were in the desert, and there they were complaining, murmuring. Turn to somebody and say, don't murmur. Amen. I know murmuring is what? We, things ain't working right. We murmur, we murmur. God called the children of Israel, said, them some stiff-necked people. Because all they did was what? Murmur, complain. But you may think you got it hard, but brother, there's some people out here that's got things harder than you can even imagine. And so when I get up in the morning, I get up thanking God. Amen. I get up giving him glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't control much, but I do com control my praise. I control my worship. Amen. All that I don't control, God's got. But what comes up out of my mouth, I can control that. And see, so God said, okay, uh, Moses, we'll help him out there in the desert. And the Bible said, talk about Moses and how good he is. Amen. Said that, uh, and he, the Lord spoke from heaven to Moses saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, at evening or in the evening, ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass, soon as somebody said it came to pass, that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, the dew lay round about them, uh, about the host. God brought manna from heaven. God fed them even in the wilderness. We, even while they were complaining about how Moses brought them up out of Egypt and how they didn't have cucumbers and they didn't have onions and all that. And, you know, all upset that he got them. They cried for 400 years for God to deliver them. And now God delivered them and now they're complaining. Wherever you are, if God got you wherever you are, don't you know God is able to take care of you? Right. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If God, wherever you are in your life and wh whoever's in your life, who got you there? God got you there. And if God got you there, I think he can keep you, right? But to make a long story short here, God brought these people up. Got them out into the desert, fed them. They didn't have enough patience to wait for God to feed them. At one time, they complained about water. Said, we don't have no water. We're about to die of thirst out here in the desert. Moses, what have you done to it? And God said, I can get you some water. Told Moses, took Moses, directed him to the rock. He said, that rock right there. He said, I want you to speak to the rock. Uh, brother, this first time, he said, strike the rock. And Moses struck it, and the Bible said it gave forth water. Amen, in abundance. So I just, you know, give God glory. God is able. Turn to somebody and say, God is able to, to bring, what, manna from heaven, quail up out the desert, water from a rock. Come on, somebody. I hope y'all get in a picture of who God is on this morning. We're going to share a few scriptures with y'all. Turn with me now over to Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. Amen. Here we see, and, and most of these scriptures ought to be in your bulletin, where Moses is giving God some praise. People who love God and worship God and have a genuine relationship with God will give him some praise. Amen. Here we see, uh, Moses saying that there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Look at what he says. Who rideth upon the heaven uh, in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. That the eternal God is thy refuge and 
underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. You know, today they don't sing that song, but when I was coming up, I don't think it was many Sundays that went by that they didn't sing that song. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Come on. Leaning on the everlasting. You need to learn to lean. Turn to somebody and say, I need to learn to lean on the everlasting arm. Everlasting arms means that he's better than mother's arms. You know, when I was a baby, mother held me in her arm. But the everlasting arms are a symbol of God's omnipotent power, a symbol of his strength. And thanks be to God for them arms. And we talk about these uh, children of Israel in the, eat, in, in the land in the desert, uh, they should have been singing a song when God delivered them and gave them food to eat. I know sometimes when God does a great thing for me and for my wife, you know, we'll sing praises to his holy name. Amen? Sing and sing with, with, my, with, with the spirit. Sometimes you need to what? Sing in the spirit. Don't just what? Pray in tongues, but sing in tongues. And give God some praise. Let the Holy Ghost praise him for you. I'm reminded of the story of the three Hebrew boys. I was using that this morning uh, as one of the scriptures. Turn with me over to Daniel 3 and 16 right quick. Talking about our God and the kind of trust that we ought to have in him. Here we find, uh, you know, Jeremiah sharing, he's praying, he's telling God about how great he is. But, you know, we need to have that settled in our minds and in our hearts about the goodness and the grace of God. You know, we don't come to church just to be sitting up listening to a good sermon. We come to see what's said in the word of God that might help me in my walk with God. Amen. You know, I, all I am is I'm just a mouth in the body of Christ. You know, I'm not coming out here to entertain y'all. I'm coming to tell y'all to the best of my ability what God had given me for you all. Uh, Daniel 3 and 16, the children of Israel had been delivered into the hands uh, of the Babylonians, and they were in captivity. Daniel was one of the, of the three mentioned in the book of Daniel went into captivity. But with him were three others. And down here in the book of Daniel, the third chapter, we find this scripture. It says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered to the king. And uh, they're giving him his answer after they, the king had, let me uh, back up a little bit. The king had set up a golden image and everybody was supposed to bow down to the golden image. Yeah. Amen. And I was listening to prophetess this morning, and, and, and you know, I'd, I'd heard that before. You know, there are gods out here in the world that you need to be careful of. Don't bow down to them. Amen. You be careful. There's a lot of gods out here. Let's be careful. Money, things, stuff, people, right? I said to y'all this morning, it's a setup. You get set up, and those are good, the, the golden image that the king had set up. I said to y'all, if you bow down to it, you've been set up by the devil. This is God to put you in a position to see whether or not you would trust him. But after he had asked him, why are y'all bowing down to my golden image? They said unto him, in this scripture, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you. In this matter, in other words, we're not, we're not anxious, we're not nervous about answering you. Is if it be so that our God, the God whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But what? If not, be it known unto thee, O king. 
that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. In other words, I'm going to say to y'all today that, you know, whatever you're going through, and maybe you haven't got delivered from it yet, it's not because God is not able to. Amen. It's not because the Bible said that God's hands are too short that he cannot deliver you. You know, my attitude is that God might not deliver me, but it's not because he can't. There must be something else or some other reason why God have not got me out of my storm yet. But if he hadn't got me out of my storm, I'm going to maintain my attitude about God because I know that he can if he wanted to. Amen. I want to have, I might go to God like Paul did. Paul went to God. The Bible says he had a thorn in the flesh. He went to God three times and finally God said, I don't want to hear no more about it. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. I said, y'all, the day that what? Ain't nothing. Say, ain't nothing. Too hard for God. Amen. You can believe God was in the desert. And uh, he, uh, Jesus was out in the wilderness and he was doing the sermon on the mount. And they, uh, a- after he had finished preaching, the disciples, I'm going to paraphrase it for you. You got it in, the Bible, in your sermon here. They had said, uh, the disciples said, Jesus, why don't you just send them home? Look what it says here in Luke, uh, Mark, rather, 9 and 21. And his disciples are speaking. Uh, and uh, he asked a question. He said, uh, I've got to hear to myself here. I've got to hear to, to the wrong script here. Y'all hold on for a second. Let me back up. Uh, I want to talk about a little demons possessed boy. Uh, his disciples had tried to cast him out, but they were unable to. This is Mark 9 and 21. Amen. Y'all stand with me for a minute. And there we see. Uh, the, uh, the man had went to his disciples and had asked them if they could deliver his son and the Bible says that they were unable to. And so Jesus, when he saw the man, he said, how long has it been since he's had this condition? And, and then Jesus said, the man said, since he was a child. He said, and oft times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him because we know what the devil comes to do, what? Still kill and destroy. And this is when he asked, he said, but if you can, what, do anything, what, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if thou canst believe all things, turn to somebody and say all things, things. are possible to him that believe it. And then straightway, the Bible says, the father said of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So you know what? First, we have to believe. We have to believe that God is able to help us in spite of how desperate the situation looks. Because the scripture here says what? All things are possible. Some of y'all might remember that scripture I did. I did. It's called the power of possibility. Some things only come forward. Some situations only get victory through your what? Prayer and fasting. I got to pray. I got to fast. If, it, if I'm serious enough about it, to talk about how I need to do what? Turn the volume up. Turn to somebody and say, I need to turn up my volume to let God know that I'm real. And I'm serious about what I'm asking him for. I'm talking about giving God some glory, believing him, trusting him. Jehoshaphat found that out. When Jehoshaphat, the Bible said, uh, was about to be attacked by a multitude, that he got before God and he reminded God of some things that God already knew. Look what he says in Second Chronicles 20 and 6. He said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Telling God things he knows. And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is thou not what? Power and might. 
so that none is able to withstand thee. Talk about giving God the praise. Turn to somebody and say, I need to give God some praise. I'm going to tell him what he already know and to give him some glory. He already know. He wants to hear me say it. Amen. As I was saying earlier in the scripture that we just looked at talking about the man who had the son who was demon possessed, you notice how humble he was. You notice he said, uh, if you can have compassion on me and my son and help us. He was a humble man. And not only that, he didn't have a big old religious spirit thinking he had it all figured out, right? We have to be too careful. We have to be careful sometimes that we don't get too religious on God. Yeah. You know, here he, uh, Jesus asked him, say, if you can believe, you know, some of us can believe, I believe, but maybe my faith ain't all that strong in some areas. I still need God to help me out here, you know. I understand that God is, as Isaiah said, the everlasting God. Look what he says here. Hast thou not known in Isaiah? Hast thou not heard that the what? Everlasting God. The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Does what? Fainted not, neither is he what? Weary. And that there is no what? Searching of his understanding. What a God, huh? Don't he understand everything? All that you're going through, all the things that you have no control over. You know, give it to God. Let God deal with it. But keep the faith, right? Turn to somebody and say, I need to keep the faith, huh? Because the word of God says what? But without what? But without what? Faith, it is how? What? It's impossible. Come on, somebody. It's impossible to please him. For he who, what, comes to God, what, must believe that he is. You know, a lot of people come to God, and I'm not certain whether they believe that God really is. I believe that God really is, and I know you do too. And that he is a what? He is a rewarder of them that, what? How diligently. Every day I pray the same prayer. I pray the same prayer. It's not that God is, you know, his memory is bad, right? It's not that God forgets what I say to him, but I keep praying. I'm a what? Pray without ceasing. And if God haven't delivered yet, I'm going to continue praying about it. Amen. Believing that God is going to bring me out. Amen? Amen? And he will bring you out. So, looking at this scripture, talking about what? Ain't nothing... Let's say it again. Ain't nothing, nothing too hard for God. And that God is a God of grace and mercy. Look at the 18th verse. We're just looking at these two verses today. The 18th verse says, Thou what? Show us love and kindness unto thousands and recompense it the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts. First thing we want to see in this scripture here is that God is a God of grace and mercy. I don't know about y'all, I'm glad about it. That's what I was trying to get to down here with this Luke 9 and 17. Talking about in the wilderness when Jesus had preached to him and the disciples, after he had Jesus had preached, this is what the disciples said. The Bible, the Bible says that when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve, talking to Jesus, and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the towns and the countries round about, and the lodge and get some victuals or something to, something to eat, right? For we are here where in a desert place. But Jesus said unto them, Give them to eat. And they said... We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we could go and buy meat. Y'all know how we do. Company come over. But send somebody down to Popeye's. Amen. Let's go over here to churches and bring some chicken in the building. You know how we do. Uh, uh, call up, uh, what? Pizza Hut. But you couldn't do that in Jesus' day. They didn't have no McDonald's and wings and things on the corner there. 
All they had was this day to explain to Jesus, we don't have but two fish. But I said to y'all today, that ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen. You know, that's the reason I know that's what has kept us going over here at Disciples Tabernacle Church because every, every week that we, we get our offering in, we lift it up before God and thank him for it. The Bible says that's what Jesus did in the wilderness. The Bible said that Jesus took the two fish and the five loaves of bread and he lifted it up and he said, God, I thank you for it. You know, sometimes you just need to thank God for what you got and watch God work. Amen. God can what? He can do a miracle with what you got, can't he? Y'all remember the little widow woman when uh, the prophet came by the house? The Bible said her husband had died. She was a widow. She had sons. And the prophet said, what have you got in the house? She said, all I got is just a little vessel of oil. She said, okay, take it, shut the door, and go borrow vessels from everybody else around your neighbors. And then pour out until it quit pouring. And she poured and she poured and she poured. And when she finally reached that last vessel, the Bible says she ran out of oil. I said, God can make a way out of no way for you. Amen. I know I've seen him. Uh, he's a miracle working God too, huh? Turn to somebody and say he's a miracle working God. I thank God at Disciples Tabernacle Church, we've seen a lot of miracles. But you know what? God is still in the miracle working business. Well, we know that God, after he had uh, Jesus lifted up the, uh, the bread to heaven, the Bible said that they fed the 5,000 plus all their family, you know, wives and children, they had, what, over 12 baskets left over. But today, as I get ready to close, I want to share a few thoughts with y'all about his grace. We're talking about the grace of God. Turn to somebody talk, say he's talking about the grace. David knew about God's grace. Uh, in the Bible, David said his loving kindness. I'm glad for God's loving kindness. Amen? Uh, look what it says in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 says what? Have mercy upon me, O God. What? According to what? That what? Loving kindness or thy grace. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, what? Blot out my transgression. I don't know about y'all. I'm glad that my transgression's been blotted out. Yeah. Every once in a while, they'll rise up and I think about things in the past, but I'm glad that, you know, God took my transgressions. The Bible says he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, that God have forgot my iniquity. God knows that I'm what I'm just dust. But David acknowledged it, didn't he? Look what David said. What? Wash me what? Thoroughly from my iniquity. He'll clean you up, won't he? Somebody say he's better than tired. He'll clean you up, won't he? I said, what? Holy Ghost detergent, right? Amen. I called up my granddaughter the other week and I told her, I said, you know, I have my neighbor get out to Costco. I need some washing powder. I said, bring me that big box that y'all have out there, you know and some fabric softener. I thought she was just going to bring me the little pieces of paper to throw in the dryer. She bought me that big bottle of fabric softener. I said, I ain't never used that before. But I'm trying to tell you, when God cleans you up, you cleaned up, church. Amen. You don't have to worry about no guilt consciousness about what you did in the past. Hey, come on, somebody. I mean, I was an evangelist. I talking about God is the God of what's uh, the second chance. Of, of second chances. I said, he's the God of the second chance. Once he's given you a second chance, you don't have to go back no more. All you have to do is just say, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sin. I'm talking about his love and kindness, church. And regardless of what you've been through and what you have done, God is able to keep you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, today as I close out, I want to close out with this last scripture here over in Matthew 9 and 35. Y'all turn down there with me. Uh, 9 and 35 would be my closing scripture here. Uh, and Jesus was speaking. The Bible said that Jesus went about all the, what, cities and the villages, teaching in all their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease. 
But when he what? He saw the multitudes. He was what? Moved with compassion. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Amen. Then the Bible said, then the Bible said that the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. What a God he is, isn't he? God is somebody, isn't he? Today I want you all to stand with me for a few minutes, and we're going to get before God and pray. If anybody's come out on today that is in need of some prayer, I know we all need prayer. As I was saying this morning, and anybody... When people talk about prayer and somebody's praying and I'm not doing the praying, I want to make sure I get my petition in. Amen. We're going to get one of the sisters to get with this young lady over here, and we're going to pray for her. You know, I found, I found a, uh, I'm always looking to be a blessing. I'd ask God to show me some people who were t- collecting money for the folk down on the border. And God sent it to me this week, and I sent them an offering because I want to send something. Maybe I can't go down there and be on the border, but I still have compassion. You know, your faith don't work if you don't have no compassion. It's no need you thinking you got faith if you don't love people. See, Jesus loves. When I preach, I preach. My my messages are messages of love. Sometimes folks say, that's a hard message, Pastor. Yeah, but it's it's tough love, though. Amen. Amen. I know God sent her by, you know, she's from Guatemala. She suffered. He said, I think her family had been killed. Somebody know who didn't tell somebody to say that her family had been killed and she's running for gangs, you know. Let's don't be like the hard hearted people up in Washington, beginning with the president. Who don't have no compassion on people. When I see Jesus one day, I want to, one thing I want to say, well, you know, you took it. To me. Remember, remember the word of God says that uh, Jesus said, said, you ministered to me when I was in prison, right? Remember, you ministered to me when I was in bondage. And you said, when did I minister to you? When did I do all that? When you help people down here. We're going to have, we're going to, we're going to pray for her.